Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here at Adventures of the Heart, Building Wisdom Through Experience. We are here today with a wonderful, incredible woman who I've had the divine guidance to meet up with and be with and have her here on the show today. This is Julie Umplenby with the Diamond Light World. And uh, she's going to be talking about you know, the, the jewel in the heart and many other things about the interconnectedness of who we are and how we all come together. And I'm also here with my co-host, V. Lynn Hawkins. And before we get started on that part, I am going to just introduce myself a little bit in case you haven't joined us here before. I'm Cynthia Gardner O'Neill. I'm the founder of the Center for Loving Consciousness, where I bring a wellness provider network together to um, make a difference in the world, to help people in their wellness so they can find what is um, brings them their happiness and joy and better health into their lives. And I excuse me, start out doing that by I've created some courses and some uh, membership called Heartmonics. And Heartmonics is about harmonizing life. It's the harmonics of the heart. And it's a healthy, it, a healthy heart creates a healthy mindset to be the life you love so that you can love the life you serve. And I'm really excited today to be here with Julie. And, and here we have is my partner, V. Lynn Hawkins. Hi everyone and welcome to today's show. We are so excited. I'm excited to be here today to meet the creator of the Diamond Light um, just world. And I'm V. Lynn Hawkins. I'm the founder and dean of the P3 Academy of Social Entrepreneurship where we teach entrepreneurs how to bring the social enterprise into their business to be able to do bigger business while they're doing big things in the world. And I'm also the host of the Biz Info Zone show. It's a web TV show where we actually bring to the savvy social entrepreneur the information and news and the hearts that teach on things to help build with ease and grace and heart those social enterprises that I've been referring to. And you know, as I have been doing my travels and, and my growth on my journey, I have come across some amazing people and some amazing things that have just totally intrigued me. You know, you, you get in that space of, I want more, I want more. <laughs> well, this has been one of those situations. I got introduced to Julie's work through Cynthia and have really just expanded my consciousness around the light that we are operating in and through and, and it comes from our hearts. It, it is totally, as Cynthia mentioned, the interconnectedness of heart that brings about so much. And I'd love for you to just be with us today with an open heart because you know, open hearts, open hearts. And what you learn today, what you're exposed to today, we want you to take back into the world and we want you to keep coming back every single week to our shows because this is where we're going to um, participate in not just the healing of lives and harmonizing life and business and relationships, but we're talking about bringing that energy into helping to heal the world. So thanks for joining us today and I'm, I'm just so excited about meeting Julie at this level and having this conversation. So I want to welcome you to our audience. Julie, thanks for being here with us today. Um, it's just such a pleasure. Welcome. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Cynthia. Just a thank you to both of you for your wonderful invitation and to just be a part of this this amazing initiative that you ladies have in respect of connecting hearts around the world uh, because that's just so, so needed in our society and um, as far as our evolution and advancement is concerned. So thank you. Absolutely. So Julie, tell us, and I'm just... I, I can't wait to hear. 
tell us your story about the journey that you've been on that's brought you to this space today where the diamond light world and the diamond light love that you are teaching and, and bringing people into has brought you through. Tell us a bit about your journey. Gosh. That's <laughs> been, been, like many of us, I think in a, it's, it's an interesting journey. You know, we all have, I think, such stories to share and tell, and hopefully they also inspire people. But um, my background really was in the corporate environment. I was a corporate animal. I came out of uh, the petrochemical after a, a 19 year career when some really, really wacky things actually started happening to me and I hadn't realized, I don't think, just how close I had been up until that point to the input of the spiritual world, my higher self and, and all of those magnificent heart impulses that at some stage in our lives, if we're programmed to open to it, we begin receiving and then there's just no mistake, there's no turning back because once that opens, there just is no other way to go but forward with it. Um, and that's really what happened about 16 years ago and I think my friends from corporate thought that I'd probably fallen out of a tree and hit my head or something, you know, because I really switched from being this like total business orientated person to, to being fascinated with color, with healing. I had healing gifts that opened up in my hands. I started studying color therapy and Reiki and A work and I was just absolutely amazed with all of these changes that were taking place within me. You know, um, and I think a, a lot of people around me were quite amazed with some of the changes that were taking place too. Um, so that's really where it started and I started exploring a lot of energy work and a lot of um, different modalities, metaphysical healing. I wanted to understand, this was my big thing, you know, I wanted to understand how life works. What is it that, that lies beyond the physical? that lie on the known realms of what we can define with our scientific paradigms and scientific minds. And science has always played a big role in what I do and I've used it to enhance my understanding of what I was experiencing along the way. So, so that kind of happened in about 97, 98. And I was blown wide open as I usually um, express it. And then a couple of years after that, I started getting these inklings. I was living in South Africa at the time, although I'm English born. Um, I'd lived here and had a career here for 30 years. Um, and I started getting this real heart to go back to England. And that's the only way I can describe it because I'd be watching things and listening to things about England and my heart was pulling me there. My conscious mind did not want to go. My conscious mind said, no, you don't want to go back to that country. You actually love South Africa. What on earth do you want to do that for? But you know as well, because this is what ladies are, are into when the heart speaks, we follow and we really need to follow. And that was, that was what happened. I actually packed up everything in South Africa, everything, left it all behind, and I went off with very little in my pocket with a little container and off our England because I'd been called to do so. And that was when my life fell apart. <laughs> and I didn't realize either at the time, these are some of the hardest lessons that sometimes when our life falls apart, it's because we need to break down the walls around our hearts in order to be able to allow something new in. But at the time, it was very, very difficult in respect of experiencing all of that. Um, and literally within two years of being in England in this very heavy, dense energy, I began receiving information in the form of encoded geometries, and I say from spirit, from my higher self, um, and a lot of the shapes contained diamonds. So if you look at what I call the jewel in the heart, which Cynthia is um, so very familiar with, it, that was one of the very first geometries that I was presented with. And all I was told um, in respect of the spiritual messages was that this code was a light code that encapsulated light that had specific transmissions that were actually going to um, trigger, if you like, 
uh, the energies of the heart. It would it would support the triggering of humanity. That was all I knew. It was working down at the DNA level, um, and literally about eighteen months. Following on from that, I got woken up at 2.30 in the morning, as has happened to so many of us, with a little nudge to wake up, get out of bed. Um, and I did that with my journal, and I sat there and I went, okay, so so you've woke me up, is it? And there I was presented with this enormous six-foot diamond grid, and it was shimmering in light. It was the most amazing thing I had ever seen, and I was told that this was a grid that I had to build between the stars, meaning the Earth star and the Sol star energy centers uh, that align with our traditional bodily chakra system. They call different things in different traditions, but I was told that I had to build this grid the grid was the vehicle for these light codes, the jewel in the heart being one of them, and that also this grid was also going to be part of a much, much bigger network, and that's where it started, and that was the diamond light world, and the diamond light work as an aspect of my healing and energy work really kicked off then between 2003 and 2004, and it has kept me fascinated ever since. So it's maybe a little bit of a long introduction that it perhaps just hopefully places things into a perspective. <laughs> well, that's beautiful and you can see I have up the original jewel in the heart. Yeah. It's that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful. You know, as you were speaking, it I, I got the divine remembrance of being drawn to one of the biggest spiritual moments of my life where I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland and I got the, the download to move where I'd grown up from. I was like 26, 27 years old, 28, I don't know, but move away from my home, my friends, to a place where I knew no one except that my mom lived there and I had a place to live temporarily and I had two little kids. Wow. And before I knew it, within a week I had a job, within, you know, X period of time, a couple of months my mom got a job. She moved. I truly was there here in Atlanta by myself. No family, yeah. only acquaintances that I had just met. So for me it was like establishing a new family. And then I could think about two other incidences where it was really um, God-driven that I do something. And one was to purchase a ring, a diamond ring. And all I could think of was at my two little kids, I have, it, who, who buys a diamond ring, right? And yeah. I have to tell you, I still have this ring, little diamonds with a ruby in the center, my birthstone. But I was told that this ring would symbolize something in my future. And it has, in fact, done that because I have been light-guided to certain things. I have seen the light come in the form of angels to protect me, to protect my family. Um, you know, it's just been amazing the things that Diamond has shown up for me to do and have. And I remember wow. telling Cynthia one of the programs that I had um, designed for my business was actually in, t in the title was Diamond. And um, to really be drawn to that and not know why was something that I was sure was going to be revealed. And I'm listening to what you're saying and the importance of knowing that the diamond really is the grid upon which light reflects. And when it's in your heart, the jewel in your heart, I just love that. Yes, I can see how it would reflect and permeate for the long distances that it can because we're energy beings. So yes. I, I thought that was just an amazing introduction into <laughs> what all of this is. Thank you for that. Whoa. And uh, I'd like to come in with both of you ladies because um, it's been amazing how what brought me to Julie 
And it was the same thing. I was going through some major transformations and having to just sur com completely surrender and say, okay, I will thy will. I, I don't know what it is that's happening here, but yep. I, I was being divinely brought to the information and the people and the experience that I was supposed to have to become more of who I am. And uh, that's when Julia was one of the first, like, really... Um, the people, the, a person who spoke to my heart about that that spirituality, that higher consciousness that I was experiencing, that I had been experiencing all my life, but didn't know how to uh, translate it or to speak about it. And when I came upon the Jewel of the Heart, it was actually in one of your light codes that you share on YouTube that was divine love. And I watched that, and I was I was in awe of it and I was like it just spoke to me and I had to contact you I and so I reached out and contacted that was back in what 2007 was it 2000 somewhere I think probably 2008 or 9 yeah, uh, yeah. was when I started creating the light code transmissions and putting them together yeah. in and ways it's like that, yeah. when you were you had just transitioned back to England and stuff yep. like that and you know, and we were both in the kind of the same place of um, surrender, you know, wondering where also how we were going to make a living and, and whatever yeah. that meant. But it was like we had to listen to our hearts where it was taking us. And then, you know, recently, like when Lynn and I got together, um, we were divinely brought together within Directions University um, and, and then started speaking to one another and then I remember one day we were having a conversation about diamonds and I brought you up and she's she's like oh my gosh you know she had this aha moment <laughs> around the diamonds so I couldn't wait to you know introduce her to you and your work and and what this all is so coming around to that what is the diamond light world what is it that you want to really share with people that they need to know about themselves and what this all means to us. What is the interconnectedness and, and all those things? I mean, I know okay. Lynn and you both spoke about it a little bit, but I need a, I want a little more stuff for um, information for people. Yeah. Um, it, it's always, you know, after sort of 10 years of, of really working with us, 10, 11 years now, and sort of really intensely, I kind of think, where do I start in terms of pulling the most fundamental information together so that people would really understand it? You know, one of the things, ways in which I describe the diamond as I've come to understand it is that it is the jewel of the unfolding self higher self, I talk self with a big S, um, and that actually takes place through this geometric structure. So first of all, I perhaps need to say that when I refer to diamond, I refer to a geometric form that is actually the octahedron. And in a great deal of spiritual literature, literature it's often referred to as the sacred octahedron. Um, and you know that wonderful um, Sanskrit, I think it's Sanskrit phase, Ummani Padmi Hum, which a lot of cultures actually use as a mantra. And it's often translated as hail to the jewel in the lotus. Okay, the emergence of the jewel from the flower that emerges from the mud, the dross of our humanity, um, eventually elevates itself beyond that. And when that lotus flower blooms, is the jewel of our essence self is actually revealed, you know, is, 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 is technically the meaning of that. Um, but another way of translating that phrase is actually hail to the diamond in the lotus. And it was a number of years before I actually realized that. So it's part of our spiritual unfoldment. So it is a geometric form, a sacred geometric form that holds the essence of who we are beyond the physical form that enables us to harness and bring in and anchor into and through our physical bees more and more of that essence so that it's expressed basically through every cell in our bodies. Um, so where we might think of ourselves for instance as just having this 
oval aura generally. You know, sort of the clairvoyants tend to see this egg-shaped aura that's in interpenetrating layers of color. Um, what I began seeing and what I was told is that we need to reconfigure or recalibrate our auric fields within the shape of this octahedron, this sacred octahedron, and with a grid because it helps to bind everything together, uh, providing stability for our evolution. Uh, for the growth of our of our spiritual self, and it's each person is actually sovereign within this particular shape within this be recreated energy field. We create what we call the planetary, the global diamond grid. So each person that works with their personal diamond becomes a part, a facet of the diamond grid of humanity. So it's the light of our souls, it's the light universe that is transmitted through this form. Um, and I think one of the things that I'd just like to share with you is, and, and I teach it on my workshops as well, but there's a few people that actually mention it, is that what scientists have actually found is that it is part of the unseen organizing structure of the universe itself. That when scientists have looked into deep, deep space, what they have found is that galaxies gather in superclusters, what they call superclusters of galaxies. These galaxies organize, these superclusters of galaxies then organize themselves spatially within the universal space in interconnected octahedra. They have traced out the line and if you Google superclusters of galaxies, egg carton effect, you will see the images that they present and those images are interconnected diamonds interconnecting at the level of superclusters of galaxies. And this, when I saw that it kind of blew my mind, you know, because I kind of thought chills. this fabric <laughs> is there at the biggest macro level we can imagine and that same fabric and organizing principle then runs through every aspect of life to, right down to our biology enabling us to connect again with the natural harmonic and flow of the universe. So we move in harmony with the will of the divine in which that universal space does that perhaps give a little bit of a perspective and respect of the diamond? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I so connect with all that. And I love that you brought up the harmonic, you know, the harmony. This yes. is one of the things that I speak to with the harmonics of the heart. How important it is for us to get, you know, that, that actually the world is harmonic. Yep. We're the ones who take ourselves out of that harmony by choosing this or that. Because we need the balance of everything, all right? So, you know, the masculine and feminine, one cannot be here without the other. It's here because of harmony. I mean, it, it's together to be harmonic. We're the ones who chooses more masculine over the feminine or whatever, you know, or we see good, more good in the world than bad or more bad in the world or right or wrong. It's a, it's a, a choice that we have that takes us out of harmony when we're not, you know, um, really, really feeling that we have that that love, that that heart experience, yeah. that harmonic energy flowing through us all the time, and uh, so yeah. that really helps kind of explain it a little bit for me. And I think what's interesting with what you were saying, Cynthia, and this is an important aspect of um, recalibrating, anchoring our personal diamond light grids, is that the octahedron as a shape is the one that represents perfect balance because no matter which way you turn the octahedron, it is perfect. If you cleave it down the middle, it's the same on all planes. Um, whereas no other sacred geometric form actually does that. So as such, it is, a, it is a vehicle for perfect balance. So in that harmonizing, it actually helps to restore the balance between the masculine feminine aspects of ourselves, that yes. we're able to listen to the intuition and then we can flow with the action that's required from that. So we bring the masculine and feminine 
back into a new level or a, um, its original level of harmony, the way that it was actually meant to be expressed through our lives. And then we raise that understanding of harmony to come into harmony more with the planet because we feel more strongly the the beat and the pulse and the heartbeat of Mother Earth through the diamond. And then we harmonize at another level with the universal flow um, because of this this grid and organizing fabric that interpermeates everything. So there's so many levels of harmony that we can actually speak about in respect of the diamond. And it has a powerful impact on the heart. Yeah, and um, you know, Julie, I have to say, I think when I really came into balance in my heart and in balance with life, in harmony with life, was when I took your, you know, you have a, a course called The Presence um, the call to presence. A, a call to presence. Oh my yeah. gosh, phenomenal! Also, you had a recalibration in there, and I remember doing that recalibration meditation. The you know codes that you have in there, phenomenal. You know, um, I you know also with that you know because I want would love to we'll be able to share with everyone here where you can connect with Julie and get those type of um, uh, that information and those trainings that she has. I got a question for you since this just came up because since we are raising, you know, we're going into the, we're in the fifth dimension, you know, and, and even I've heard that the chakra colors are changing and um, because we're changing in the vibration, our vibration. And is the same thing, is the same thing happening with uh, the, you know, the octahedral, the energies in there or is, are we just coming into balance with the, the energies of the diamond light? My personal sense is that um, we are coming more to balance with the energies that are actually flowing onto our planet that are being facilitated um, in respect of being accessed by the diamond light and the diamond light grids. Um, the, uh, the, the chakra is actually changing color. The chakra is a really an interesting, uh, if you like, uh, it, there's an interesting understanding about the chakra system that I've actually been given as a consequence of the diamond light work. And I think, Cynthia, as you know, all the way along, I've had to trust and trust and trust in the information that was given, knowing that some of it would probably only be meaningful or uh, perhaps validated in some way, shape or form when, when science had advanced enough to be able to do that. But one of the things that I was told about it, which made perfect sense to me, was that understanding that there is this whole concept of implosion into the heart field where ultimately all of our chakras, once they are clear and, and balanced, will actually collapse within the toroidal field of heart. The diamond actually facilitates this. So from, from my perspective, the changing frequencies of the chakras are actually part and parcel of elevating, clearing, and actually aligning everything so that ultimately they can all collapse into the heart. And when we are, and I say collapse is maybe not the right word, but it's, it's this implosion, it's understanding this implosion physics, but we literally become living heart fields. And the diamond facilitates this because the amount of energy that is then collated and collapsed into just the heart field is absolutely tremendous and so powerful. And the diamond being the strongest geometric shape and form that there is, is the shape that enables us to hold the awesome power of those higher dimensional energies when they start um, imploding into the heart center, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like, you know, an easy thing is integration. That it just all... Integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole lot integrating the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course the diamond, if like, reflects and refracts um, all colors, all colors, all frequencies. So mm -hmm. it's going to reflect back to us what we're actually able to integrate, absorb, and transmit through our living presence, through our living um, living form as well. So all of those colors would actually be present within the diamond. Wow. Well, that, that brings a question to my mind, 
You know, okay. first of all, um, this is really expansive thinking for most people. And um, it's, it's more than interesting. It's like you really have to lean in to, to get the fullness of what's being talked about if you've been someone that's been on the edge of spirituality, on the edge of understanding energy. And, you know, Cynthia and I have had these conversations about, around people who are in um, dis-ease. They yep. are battling, and, and I really, I call it battling illnesses, um, yet we all have come to the understanding, and I say understanding because understanding does not denote or connote uh, belief, but we are yep. all under the understanding that the body is an amazing um, thing an electrical field that dis-ease really um, can be eliminated in totality and the body has a way of healing itself in in such a miraculous way that's the way that we were built but what you're talking about as far as the uh, you know full and complete alignment of the energy systems and in that space for that length of time being able to really integrate and I, I like the even the visual that implosion um, provides because integrate kinda of still stays you know vertical yes. implosion does the movement of yes, you know right. coming into so that you can come out Yes. And so I'm, I'm thinking that that truly is the better word, although alignment is in that stage of implosion. You know, you have to align first in order to, yes. to go into, in order to come out of. Absolutely. I'd, I'd love for you to speak mm -hmm. to the healing aspect of the diamond light and you know, the the whole concept of healing through, you know, mental awareness, connecting with heart awareness of what the energy systems can do to help heal physical, mental challenges. Okay. Um, you know, to me, again, this is one of the things is that I started off when I started doing healing work with the Reiki and what have you, almost identifying myself as a healer. And as I grew with the diamond, I always say the diamond has been my greatest teacher. As I grew with that, I almost dropped that identification. Um, and I couldn't even refer to the diamond light grid work as healing work, healing natural outflow of it, but the alignment and the recalibration was actually the most important aspect because the energies that we are then exposed to that are enabled through the alignment of the our personal diamond light grids will facilitate healing at the level it is we need it. So because it has this um, ability to integrate all of our different subtle inner bodies and subtle energy systems, it is able to, um, how can I actually describe this? It's, it's able to cut through and to shed light on the areas where healing is required. Now this becomes an interesting concept because we often keep shy away from what is uncomfortable. Uh, what may not feel comfortable and this this is one of my own lessons I've been through so much that's uncomfortable I've had the rug pulled out from under my feet over and over and over again you know as as I think you probably have Cynthia as well and I don't know about you but in many yeah. ways you know and I'm thinking well how can this be healing you know this is like really painful or really uncomfortable but but one of the things uh, the qualities of the diamond if you like and the diamond like grid is to actually amplify what is not aligned or in balance so that we can see it more clearly and it then enables us to make different choices. The minute we make a different choice, a different mental decision, we initiate healing mm -hmm. or healing is initiated. 
so to, so we we're able to step into a different space which is facilitated by that that clarity that insight there are there are much deeper insights and we know that healing is actually related to frequency and frequency imbalances so if we begin the restoration of our ideal frequency space healing is going to follow as a result but as as we know with healing is that sometimes that doesn't take place in the way that we expect so there's almost a a complete letting go of judgment expectations and beliefs that whatever healing we need is going to come about in a specific way and the diamond essentially um, and our connection through that with a new harmonic brings us to a level of trust in the overall journey and in the process itself. So it's less about the destinations and the expectations and more about understanding that that is where the journey is taking us. And it gives us, um, there's, a, there's a more peaceful sense of acceptance about wherever we are at. And we know well that the minute we accept where we're at at the moment, so then initiate space for something different and new to come in. So there's so many qualities that I think are brought to us that that can stimulate and add to our concept and our understanding and our experience of healing. Yeah. Um, if you like, does that make sense? It does. It yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I'd like to expand on some of that you say because, you know, healing, for one thing, um, I like to say that we're returning to wholeness. I really believe you know, that peace that we find is returning us back to who we are meant to be in this world. Yes. And um, that's what it just seems like to me that, you know, we're in dis-ease because we're not being who we are. Yeah. And so our energy is off. Our harmonics of our heart, we're not, we're not living our heart's desire. And yeah. it does allow for us to know ourselves more, to understand ourselves, to accept ourselves, to love ourselves. You know, it yeah. takes, the, you started with also, you know, I have five levels of consciousness within harmonics, and it starts with awareness. And that's one of the things you said. It kind of brings, you, you know, you have to get, know where you're at to clarify where you're at first, to be aware, you know, what's happening here and yeah. be in it to actually go to the next level. And you decide, gosh, I need to change something here. And so you go seek out the knowledge. So that's the next, the second level. And then once you get yeah. the knowledge, you have more understanding, and then you start accepting, you know, yourself yeah. more, and that you are a wonderful, perfect, healthy, whole, and complete human being. Yeah. And we begin to love ourselves. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I love when I say harmonics and harmonizing life, and I speak to self-love, and self, I believe self is source, energy, love, frequency. It's your enlightened inner pharmacy, you know, that we have. Yeah in here to return us to ourself, that source energy yeah. love frequency that we are. And um, yes, in order for us to get there, we've been so conditioned and desensitized to not feel, to not feel who we are, to not feel our hearts. And our hearts are what speak to us through the emotions and feeling. And um, that really brings us back to our power, our place of, of empowerment so that we can make a difference in the world by like what we went through you know Julie I know Lynn has and myself when I went through that total like everything just um, just was total financial devastation foreclosure on my home hitting a car and totaling my car um, hitting uh, an elk and totaling my car and then being yeah. totally you know homeless everything you know and all I was down to a horse trailer that's it. And my horse died, you know, and I was like, yeah. oh, what? What, what? What are you asking of me? What are you asking yes, that's exact. Yeah. All right, I have to surrender it and know that you have something better in store for me. Yes. And then I, then when I let go, any kind of illness or disease that I might have brought on myself disappeared because it was no longer a part of my frequency. I wasn't looking at life and saying, Oh my God, this is horrible. Instead, I went, all right, 
I, I surrender. What is it that you're asking me to do? And I realize if I only have you, love, I have everything. Because yes. inside of myself, I found that peace, that source energy love frequency that I am. I love that acronym, Cynthia, Source Energy Love Frequency. It's beautiful. And to me, that is an acronym that actually describes what man does. It's, it's a, a conduit that facilitates access to that. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you know what? I think I received that because of my experience with you and the diamond. And yeah. I just want to bring in how you and I you know, met, you know, and yes. I have spoke of it earlier, but also my being able to come to England was during the time when I had gone through that experience that year. It was in 2010. I ended up in England and I was totally provided everything I needed to go do these. I traveled more during 2010 when I was absolutely devast financially devastated and had nothing than when I, you know, throughout my life. So, and I ended up being given the opportunity, someone gave me flight miles to come see Julie and uh, all kinds of stuff. I, if, you know, I would say we don't have to force what is meant to be and that so speaks to me about how I got to come see you and then when I flew in, before I left here, I kept seeing eights, 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 you know, and I thought, do I fly out? And this was during the summer solstice and um, I thought, do I fly out June 18th and return on June 28th? I was trying to listen to what my heart was saying to me, you know, about traveling and what I was doing. And, you know, I never, that never happened quite that way, you know, because, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that eight was about until the, the, I got in really late in the evening. And um, the next morning, really early in the morning, Julie gets me up with her friend Anne, who's there. And they're like, a crop circle was formed. We got to go find this crop circle. <laughs> and we headed on out to find this crop circle. You know, they don't give you, they don't tell you where it is exactly. They just said what town it was in. And I had never been to England before. But here we all, the three of us, are feeling where this crop circle is. And we found it. And we laid in it. And, and I will post that picture um, in the event page for everyone. But we laid it in, and we were all laying there together, you know. It was so funny. We're on the ground, and we're going, what does this feel like to you? What do you think the shape is and everything? And we actually all had an experience with it and shared it. And then later on, while we were there, there was one of those ultralights that flew over and took pictures of the... Um, the circle. And so later on when we got home, we looked it up and they there there we were. <laughs> you can see our little beings in there. And um, it was an eight. Yeah. It was an eight. And so we speak of this year, 2015, being the year of eight, infinite possibilities and potential. So I really believe that, you know, and having the opportunity to have Julie here right now, and Julie's going to be coming to America. Um, on, in September, which we're going to be ho hooking up, and I'm hoping, I mean, I, I won't say hoping, we are going to be putting together some live courses together in September when she comes to visit me here yeah. in Crawford, Colorado. And uh, so she has some great things that are happening, and maybe you can um, talk about a little bit of that and what's kind of brought you in here, and uh, any and any questions, Lynn, that you have for her, too, as before as we move it. And I know that you have just had, um, on June 23rd, a, uh, a special... Um, May, sure. May 23rd. What's it called? May, it's May 23rd, and it's a special, um, I call them sort of diamond community uh, transmissions because we all gather and we do, uh, I do a little bit of a, a webcast that actually has a theme, and I'm usually guided to put these together. Um, and uh, pointed towards specific date. And the May 23rd was um, grace, gratitude, and forgiveness. And that's the focus of the energy that we will gather as a community within the diamond. So, so we help to exponentially amplify those qualities as we begin to anchor and trigger them into the planetary grid. So, so that's um, the focus of the May 23rd one and quite fascinatingly when I was guided towards that date and that 
concept, the, the word forgiveness just kept on coming at me really, really strongly. Um, I found out that in the Tolkien calendar that May 23rd is actually a gap day, which means it's a day when we have greater access to cosmic energy and that the mm -hmm. essence of that particular gap day is ruled by what they call the white dog. It's overseen by the white dog and the white dog is about unconditional love and the heart. So whenever I do these web, so that was just perfect for the word that was getting, you know, grace, gratitude and forgiveness. Um, and all combined within the diamond and focused on this particular cosmic gap day, the 23rd of May. And what I do when I do these webcasts is I actually put them up as well. So the recordings are available. If people can't join in live, they're still able to download them afterwards. So all you would need to do is go to my website and um, have a look for the latest webcast if you want to bathe yourself in the energies of grace, gratitude and forgiveness and it's also whatever we do we know and we focus on moving through into planetary grids because what we do for ourselves we ultimately do in service to the rest of humanity and that's the beauty of the way that our diamond online diamond community actually um, works. So it's, it's just a, a really beautiful gathering. There's be some, some stunning souls that, that are regulars at these webcasts because their sense of themselves shifts over time and their sense of contribution towards the upliftment of people's hearts and minds globally is also fulfilled as part and parcel of that. So it's just beautiful. Um, it's, a, it's a blessing for me to be able to facilitate them. So thank you for bringing that one up, Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. I'm really yeah. excited. Yeah. So, um, Lynn, I'm I'm just I'm um, I'm sitting here and thinking I'm just blown away by this because I feel the energetic pull on me personally to learn more and to experience more because I have had the cursory introductory experiences that have opened me up to this, yet. I've been open enough to know that the the revelation to allow me greater understanding and greater benefit was in front of me and I feel like so many things are meeting me in the space that I am now that have truly been uh, instrumental in in me doing what I do now in my being of service in the business that I have and the, the opportunities that are unfolding for me right now and I know that you know this is the energy that we are in that so many of us are in yeah. yet um, you know I come to out of the corporate world out of the corporate environment um, you know what I can yeah. say to kind of shift that a bit is I'm also a PK my mom was a pastor for almost 20 years and so I was brought up believing and very well entrenched in the spiritual teachings um, and had a huge problem with the religious side okay. so I learned a lot in in respect to religion being different than spiritual and where I chose to stand and knowing that I've stood and moved through my life from a spiritual perspective um, has really allowed me the opportunity to be open to even more because I can't tell you the number of people who think that they are spiritual yet how the religion kind of overshadows what it is that they're doing so they are either just allowing themselves a peek behind the curtain and that curiosity is sometimes frightening to them as well as just you know there's so many of us who are just awakening to all of this now and yeah. I guess I would ask you for you know those of us who are continuing the the charge of introducing people to this continued awakening and sparking awakening and um, prompting the the is you know 
the faster pace, um, how can we do more? I know the answer is get connected with you. Within the diamond. Whatever you do within it is amplified. You know, but to me, I think where I've got to with my journey is just really being in a state of grace and knowing that things are unfolding exactly as they are meant to and that the work that you are doing and that Cynthia is doing and that everybody is doing in contribution towards the awakening is absolutely perfect. And as long as we're always attuned to our guidance to our self that flows through it, we will be contributing. You know, for, for me, I've kind of, um, I don't have any sense of I've got this really great mission in the world or anything like that. I know that I'm a part of um, something and a plan and, and a flow that is way, way bigger than me. And I just play, I'm, I'm content with the fact that I'm actually playing my role, if that, if that makes sense. Yes, that is a beautiful <laughs> answer too. I love it because, I mean, what more can we do, right? That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I look around. I'm in a country now. I'm back in South Africa where I came to three months ago, and I'm back here. And the social issues and the political issues and the issues of violence are still topmost in people's minds. You know, things like that haven't changed, and I have to look around and go. I can't change that. I can change my interactions with life within this environment, one person and one day at a time. You know, sometimes I think we can be overwhelmed by everything that's going on out there. I, I research a lot of stuff. I look at what they're doing with CERN and the, you know, 13 terawatts of uh, electrovolts of energy that they're pumping up at CERN at the moment without any thought of consequence and what it's doing to the planet or the magnetosphere. And you look at people like Monsanto and you're going, ah, you know, and it would be so easy to get completely wired up yes. about what's going on. So, so I do keep myself aware of what's happening and then whenever I actually feel the emotional trigger, I engage with my own heart. That's where I think the grace, gratitude and forgiveness practice actually comes in um, so that I can restore and maintain my balance because the more I can do that, the more I can amplify that, the more it just eats up the awakening of, of everybody else. You know, and I think that's the gift that we bring. So so yeah, that to me is probably one of the key messages. I so that love that. And that's been a conversation uh, I've been having a lot lately that we've even had on the show. And I do believe um, our last show that we had with just Lynn and I about connecting people globally, I had said that very thing um, is about it, everything begins within you. You have to find that peace first here before you can go and say, you know, point the finger and say what you're doing there is wrong, you know. Yeah. Instead, you got to find the peace inside you because you're not going to be able to go out there and change that. What you can do one person at a time is what's in the heart. When it when you have a harmonized heart, your connection with each individual person harmonizes those person, and it goes out and it goes out and it goes out through collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing with inside yourself is making a difference, beginning yeah. here, beginning right here. So like I love that you said, you know, when I get triggered, you know, my emotions get triggered best thing I can do is go into my heart and hold that space of blessings and love and forgiveness, uh, compassion, yeah. all of that actually turn, you know, changes your DNA too and it actually yeah. um, amplifies and restores you. It um, gives birth to new stem cells which are non-determined you know, and so can go into wherever you need your cells to be regenerated. Love, the harmonics of the heart regenerates life. And yep. same thing, when we are in harmonics, you know, I truly believe this because it's been shown like Masaru Emoto, Masaru Emoto, he showed that, you know, when he had uh, polluted water and it was it had no structure, no form, it was just muck, okay? Yes. When he showed it under the microscope. 
And so that's negativity and toxins in there. there there's, no, there's no structure to it. But when you introduce, when he would introduce beautiful sound or love or compassion into that water, that toxic water, it would transform the water molecule, the structure of it, and all of a sudden there was a pattern, a beautiful snowflake pattern that's in there, new crystal, you know, diamonds in there, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so love, or the, the, the golden ratio, 1.618, is in everything, you know, um, the pattern of life. And so if we are um, putting love and compassion into things and we're harmonic in our hearts with that, we are creating more in the world. I always say increase love. You know, increase love because what that does is it creates a more green planet too because you revitalize it the same way you revitalize yourself. Yep. You know, so the patterns of life, love is what sows the patterns of life into our planet, into what we have here. We wouldn't have a world. We wouldn't have nature. We wouldn't have any structure, any beauty, anything if it wasn't for love and compassion, and kindness, and forgiveness, all those things that fit in there that create that harmonics of the heart. Uh, that's if I can just add to that, Cynthia, because yeah. it's just so beautiful that that analogy, you know, of Dr. Masaru Emoto with the unstructured water versus those beautiful crystals, just to what I was talking about initially with the auric field, because that was one of the things that made perfect sense to me is that the auric field, in terms of this fluffy, diffuse aura. Um, the minute we overlay and we calibrate with the diamond, we give structure to the auric field and that structure is a structure that actually also enables love. So there's, there's almost a two-way street is that people who develop in the heart immediately start developing the diamonds in their energy field and when we calibrate to the form itself, we also add to and stimulate and boost the energy of the heart. So you've got this dual feedback mechanism that takes place as a consequence of that geometric form. And in fact, it was um, one of one of the um, authors that I've also looked at is a guy called Douglas Vogt, and he maintains that if you take an octahedron and you look through it at a 45 degree angle, what you are presented with is the two-dimensional form of the hexagon, which is those perfect water crystals. So there's an intricate link between the structure, the water crystals, and the diamond. And I just, there's so much. I mean, I could, on I know. you know, I could sit here and talk about it for hours because it just, Me too. it's and fascinating. I'm, I'm getting such a <laughs> body buzz. I'm, I'm being buzzed. You know, whenever the divine really is saying yes to me, it buzzes me like, you know, a cell phone when your cell phone buzz. That's the experience yeah. I get. You know, like, yeah. yes, you guys are talking. You know, I feel this. Yes, this is what we are yeah. here to speak to, to help people understand more of. And um, so any, we're getting down to um, the last minutes of our show. And oh, this has been so fascinating. And uh, so is there, Lynn, I know you might, you've got to have some questions. Cause I love, because I brought, you know, Lynn hasn't had this experience with Julie and this information. And although she's been a part of it, and she spoke of that during this show right now, but what is coming in for you, Lynn, that, uh, you know, uh, that you're experiencing right now? I'm experiencing, um, how can I find out more? <laughs> how can I get more connected? How can I help to support you and the work that you're doing? Because I am a part of the matrix. And... Um, to increase my knowledge and ability to express more. Are we still online? Did she? I think she froze. Of. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. no! <laughs> uh, there you are. You're back. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. How do I get more? Okay. 
So if um, if I could actually suggest to people that if they're interested in uh, learning more about the diamond, I've got an introductory program, which is a um, it's a downloadable program that comes with a series of MP3 files and a 130-page workbook. So you can work through it in your own pace, but it gives you a lot of background into the diamond and a lot of preliminary exercises that you can work with yourself. Um, to be able to uh, begin to align yourself with the structure and form, to align your energy bodies with the form, because there is an alignment that has a specific orientation around the physical body. And this orientation is significant because the way that energy collects in the diamond when it's properly aligned with energy is focused, believe it or not, through the heart. And that's that's a whole other story, but there's, there's all sorts of there. So so that's the, the, the first thing that I would actually suggest. And that program is called the Call to, pres call to Presence. Yeah. Um, and it's available as a... Um, a downloadable program via my website, which is diamondlightworld.net. If you sign up for my newsletter as well, there are some free meditations so people can uh, begin to experience for themselves as well through guided processes what the energy of the diamond feels like through these guided meditations. So there are some free ones when you sign up for the newsletter. If you want to take it further, there's the program. And then I also, I love doing the in-person teaching where for those who are therapists or who are interested in working with other people, there are ways in which we can also facilitate aligning this diamond fabric with other people as a therapist and as a uh, on a one-to-one -one basis and that is fascinating but those really need to be in-person workshops at the moment so I'm really hoping that um, and putting it out there by divine grace yeah there will be an opportunity for some in-person <laughs> workshops and sharings when I'm in the USA in between mid-September and the end of October and yeah. I'm definitely coming to Cynthia in Colorado and then it would be absolutely wonderful to see you too so that in, yes. a, in a nutshell is where to start but please have a look at the website there's lots of info yeah so when you when you go to the diamond light world dot net dot net uh -huh, um, go in there you know play around is there a certain area that they need to go to that they just kind of go to um, Class, is it classes or what's, what's on there? Um, no, let me give you, because there's a lot of information now that's available on the website. Yeah. Um, if you go to the shop button, so there's a whole lot of background, there's some other resources, and there's, you can sign up on the newsletter on the first page. Um, if you go to the shop and you just scroll down, you'll see a... Um, a menu option which is highlighted a call to presence. So it's shop and a call to presence. So that will take you to the uh, page with information about the home study program. And then always take a look under events and teleseminars and web presence because I do have, as I'm guided, I then put events out. And sometimes I do that at short notice because I only really have you know, there have been times when my guidance has given me info about something I needed to do literally a week before I needed to do it. That, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so you there. might want to bookmark the page. <laughs> right, right. So um, we will post that information. Also, when you go there, make sure you know you communicate with Julie. Let her know that you you know saw her here in Adventures of the Heart, and we have been here building wisdom through experience. Okay. I know you guys have all had an experience with us today. What an incredible way to receive some knowledge and more understanding about yourself, beginning to accept yourself and really feeling that self-love within you. We've brought that awareness and we are so excited that you're here joining us and even for those people who are coming in and watching the replay. All this is available to you and I want you to know that Keep in contact here with us, too, because we're going to be letting you know about Julie coming here. And Julie and I are going to be doing some courses, uh, live courses and classes together in the area of Crawford, Colorado, where I live, where is in a beautiful stargate of the global world here. So um, 
I guess global and world are the same. <laughs> yeah. But so uh, global, anyway, global community. The global community. Yeah. So we will be sharing that information with you because we are putting all that together and, and um, I am so excited that she's going to be here and, and be able to come see the lovely place, beautiful energies and vortex that I have where I live. So <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. So any last words, ladies? Oh my gosh. I just want to say thank you so much, Julie, and to our audience. If you didn't know who you came here to hear us talking with today, we've been with Julie Uplimby of the Diamond Light World, and it's just been an amazing conversation. And the information, watch this recording over and over and over again. Really get entrenched in what was shared today because this has been for you. As much as it's been for us, it, it has been for you. And if you are here watching live or the replay, this is where you're supposed to be. So kudos to you. Now just buckle down and take it in. Open your heart and take it all in. And join us as we continue to play as part of the global Diamond Light World community. Thanks, Julie. Uh Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Cynthia. Can I just say I think that you're doing an awesome job um, and you're doing something so fundamentally valuable in respect of uplifting people's hearts um, in restoring love and harmony out into the communities and into the world. And, and just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for what you're doing and thank you for inviting me onto the show. Mm. And again, thank you for thank being you. here. So just to end, I have a couple of things to say to end up on the show here. Um, number one, an attitude and diet full of love is a life full of miracles. So and that's a, a choice, the attitude is. And next, breathe deep into your heart and love yourself more today than you did yesterday. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye for now. Bye for now. God bless. Bye.